I can already tell I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this one today. And I really, really hope you guys are gonna enjoy it as well. I think you will. Today we're gonna be doing a rebuild on one of my favorite teams to rebuild in LB The Show. We got the Brewers coming in here today and the Brewers always give us constant bangers. The team in LB The Show is one of my favorite teams to actually get people off of. As a lot of you guys know to watch the challenges and the rebuilds and everything like that, I steal their pitching like no other. I get Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Devin Williams, I get Josh Hader, I get Brent Suter. I get so, so many of their pitchers. The offense though is a very, very different story. I really don't get anybody from the offense. I guess the only guy recently that I've gotten out of the Brewers lineup has been Keston, and that's really been about it. So that's personally gonna be my main focus in this entire rebuild. Get them a star-studded lineup. I'm talking from the very top to the very bottom, absolute killers throughout. So we'll see how this goes. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys do, leave a like on it. Also, real quick, if you guys wanna see the Pirates rebuild, let's go for a thousand likes on today's video because the Pirates are gonna take a very, very long time. And I'm kind of surprised I haven't done them already. So if you guys wanna see it, a thousand likes on today's video, and we'll go ahead and get that going later. But either way, let's go ahead and get into this. Let's go ahead and get this Brewers rebuild started. And let's go ahead and get to the team real quick. So just recently, the reason why we're actually doing this rebuild is because they traded with my favorite team. The Brewers went out and actually got the king of vibes himself, Willie Adamas, and he's gonna be slotting in a shortstop. This dude was one of my favorite guys in the Rays. Sadly, he was the one dude to fall out of that insanely stacked up infield. As a Rays fan, I still think the Rays are gonna be good without him, but still not having him in that clubhouse is a massive killjoy. All the Brewers fans have probably seen him for a couple games at this point. You guys understand now, even if the guy's not producing exactly how you want him, the dude is the king in that dugout. Always hyping everybody up and always bringing that positive energy that I feel like so many teams need. And I feel like the Rays are gonna have a massive hole in that department because Willie Adams is gone. But the Brewers got a guy here. I cannot wait for this. I'm hoping they can do good for us in this rebuild, but we'll see what happens. Next up, Christian Yelich is gonna be on that comeback tour, baby. 2020 was not the best year for him. Had a 205 average. That is not like Christian Yelich. So again, I cannot wait to lead this guy into a comeback tour. It's gonna be so great for him because this dude is getting paid a boatload of money. And it's only going up the longer this rebuild takes. So I'm hoping that we can actually get this thing done. And besides that in the offense, I guess Colton Wong's been pretty decent. But again, besides all that, we got Keston. I've heard he's been playing first base actually. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and move him over right there. So there we are. He should technically go up in overall. I'm pretty sure. Never mind. He goes down by what? Two? I think it was two, but we'll see what happens there. He's a glitch in this game. I think he'll be fine, but still, I don't exactly like him being a 70 overall. That's a little bit crazy. Again, another guy that didn't have a great 2020, but I don't think he deserves that 70 overall, especially after 2019. But that's just me. I don't know. We'll see what happens in this. But yeah, going back to it, we're going to need a third baseman. We're probably going to need a first baseman, to be honest. Probably going to need a couple guys in the outfield as well. It's going to get a little rough out here. But I'm very, very excited for one thing. And like I was saying in the intro, there's one thing and one thing only on this team, pretty much, that I'm super ecstatic about. And that's their pitching. Woodruff, Burns, Peralta. We got Josh. We got Adrian Hauser. We got Brett Anderson, another guy that's a rebuild god. And the relief pitchers, we got Devin. We got Prince Suter. We got Justin, what is that, Topa or Topa? We got Eric Yardley. And we also got Brett Boxberger. Okay, some of these guys I haven't heard of. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't heard of Eric before and I have not heard of Justin, but I'm very, very excited to see how they do. I mean, I'm not gonna pretend like I actually know these guys because I got no freaking clue that they even were pitchers at this point. Justin apparently looks like a beast from last year and Eric as well. Okay, let's go. I'm ready for him. But then going on to the last guy in the pen, we got Josh Hader. This dude's gonna absolutely shove. I cannot wait for it. Also, look at the hair in that picture. My God, why is that giving me like a flashback of like mechanical pencil lead? What the heck is going on? Tell me right now that does not look like mechanical pencil lead from school. 100% that does. I mean, I might be going crazy, but I know for a fact I'm not the only person that sees that. But besides all that, we have four catchers in the MLB, okay? Yeah, this team's built different, I should say. This team's built very, very different. In the power rankings right now from the show, we are 10th overall in the entire MLB. And with us being in the central, I feel like we're gonna have a pretty easy job here. I mean, I'd say the Cubs are pretty much gonna be our only threat, at least for this game, because those guys in this game spent some serious cash in like 2022, 2023. I'd say the Cardinals and the Reds are gonna be our biggest competition for 2021. And then those poor Pirates, I have no clue when they're ever gonna be good again. I'm hoping it's sometime soon, but who freaking knows, dude? Let's go ahead and get 2021 started, and I'll see you guys probably back here around, I'd say the draft, actually. I think I'm gonna go ahead and draft today. I'm feeling good, so let's see how this goes. And here we go, 2021 first-year player draft. We are 15th overall. Let's see if we can go ahead and get a stud real quick. From the looks of it right now, we got a lot of closing pitchers here, pretty much all the closing pitchers that I'm gonna go for. And then we also got one pitcher that's 2024. Probably not gonna go for him. It's looking like it's gonna be all closing pitchers. Actually, never mind. Hold on. How the heck did I not see a starting pitcher right here? He was hiding. I was so focused on the closers over here. I didn't even see Odell. My bad, bro. Okay. He throws 95, got four pitches. Does not look bad at all. I gotta say, does not look bad one bit. And pretty much the only other guy here that really intrigues me is James Weaver. This dude looks amazing, by the way. That was left, has some absolute gas in the tank, and he looks like he'd be a very, very good closer. The only thing is, we'll really pair him with Josh Hader. We'd have pretty much two of the same guy. I really don't know if that's gonna work that much, because I'd say if you put two of the same guys pretty much, it might not go over as well as you think. So I'm thinking for this, I might just have to go with Odell, but then again, James is gonna shove. I think I'm gonna have to go with Odell, though. So there we 
we go. We got him. I can tell you guys right now that Weaver's gonna be a stud. Next up, Arturo Jimenez. Holy crap. We got those 96 again, four pitches. Looks amazing throughout. Again, another lefty. I love myself some lefties in this game. Yes, please. Give me him. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and go for one more guy. I hope that we can get a position player, but it's looking like a lot more pitches. I mean, we got a first baseman, but he's gonna be ready by 2025 plus. The guy's gonna be like 26 by the time he gets up here. I think I'll be fine. So Gary, I'm sorry, but you'll find a different team. We got Sydney over here at those 91. I'm not really feeling it too much. We got Richard who throws 97, three pitches. As a starter, I don't think he's gonna work, but as a bullpen piece, this dude could be nasty. I'm going with Richard, 100%. Big Richard, get over here, let's go. Let's go and sim the rest of this and let's see how we did. If we go ahead and check this real quick, we got Odell being an A potential and a 75 overall. There we go. The big question is what's that potential number gonna be? I'm hoping it's gonna be high 90s, but let's see what happens. Like I'm talking 97 plus. Odell, don't do me wrong here, come on. Let's see, 93, god dang it, okay. And the rest of the guys are 70s and below. Again, for not scouting pretty much anything, I'll take the 90, but besides that, it is what it is. All right, let's go ahead and keep this thing going. I'll see you guys on the treaded line and let's see if we got to make any trades because right now it's looking like it. And coming in right now, we're 51 and 53. Definitely not where I want to be. How are we doing? We're still in first place. Bro, the central is so crazy. There is no other division in the entire MLB where you could be below 500 and in first place. How the heck did they get away with this? I actually want to know. Also, how does this game get away with the Cardinals being 43 and 61? Come on, game. They're a little bit better than that. You got to be somewhat nice to them. Holy crap, this game's savage, bro. Well, now let's go ahead and check the lineups real quick. The thing that I feel like we're gonna have to upgrade the most. Colton Wong real quick leading off. He's definitely getting on base. I like that. So far, he's got 18 doubles already this season, so that's great. The guy's on pace to break his own personal record. I do see strikeouts are up a little bit, though. That's definitely not great, but we'll see how it goes. Lorenzo Kane doing fantastic. The guy is 34 years old, though, so we are gonna have to get somebody different, and I would like to get rid of that contract. I think that we might end up moving him this year. I hate to do that, but I think it might have to happen. Next up, Yelly hitting a 340, pretty much 26 home runs. Like I said, comeback season, baby. Be full effect right here. The guy's got a 6.3 at the trade deadline. What the heck? Next up, we got Omar. Actually, a dude that is one of the greatest catchers to get in franchise. And the dude's in a 240. This guy is a residential. He pays rent in the 300 average mark. But right now, he's hitting below 250. That's actually disgusting. Okay, Manny Pena. This guy's doing good out of 41 games. I'll take it. Avisiel Garcia, fantastic. Willie Adamas, not so great. Again, the king of vibes, but the strikeouts are not looking that great right now. Travis Shaw could definitely be better. And besides that, that's it for the lineup. Now let's go ahead and check the rotation. There we go. Woodruff being a beast. Burns again shoving. Freddy Peralta not doing so great. A 5.33. Striking out a lot of people, but still. 3 and 11. Not good. What's this dude's fit bat real quick? If we take a look at it. 3.68. That's not terrible. I will say that. That's not terrible. I guess it really doesn't accurately like show his ERA, at least for this, but I will say that we definitely want to see a lower fit. If he can get into like those 3.4s or 3.3s, he's going to be fantastic, but I don't know if he's going to get there. We'll see how that goes. Adrian Hauser doing fantastic. Again, another low-key glitch. And then Josh actually over here, not really doing the greatest. I know this guy pitched in either Japan or Korea, one of the two, and the guy came back very, very recently. I'm probably not going to keep him though. If I'm being 100% real with you guys, I really don't think I'm going to use him. I think I could find someone way better. So I think that's most likely what we're going to go ahead and do this year. Besides that, the bullpen, a couple of these guys aren't really doing so great, like Eric. Oh my God. So we're definitely going to have to get rid of him too. But besides that, everybody else doing all right. Let's go ahead and get to work real quick. First up off the board, Josh is going to be out of here. Let's see what type of pitcher I want. I definitely want a lefty. Andrew Heaney's a, what the heck? He's a two way player. Yo, these angels are off their meds right now. They got Otani being one of the greatest two way players that we've seen whenever, pretty much. The dude's been crazy this year, but bro, what? It's got to be a glitch. He's played 101 games. What the heck's this dude's average? He's apparently played. 20 games in the field, has zero at-bats, zero hits. What is happening? We might have to figure that out later. I don't know what the heck's happening with this game, though. Either way, back to finding that lefty. Let's go ahead and find him real quick. And the first guy we're going to go for is actually from the Houston Astros, and we're going to go for Framber Valdez. I haven't got this guy for a couple rebuilds, and the dude always does good for me. Again, he throws left. He's that lefty that I'm looking for. He's going to be great. For Josh, Luis, and Derek Fisher, I mean, come on. It's an easy deal. We got to do it. There we go. So now we got that good lefty I've been wanting. That's perfect. Moving on to the next thing. Let's go ahead and get that third baseman. And no shot they're actually going to make it this season. No way. Are you kidding me? Brian Anderson's gonna be coming over here now. This dude's ceiling is ridiculously high. Way better than Travis Shaw. I can tell you guys that right now. Granted, we are gonna be losing a lefty bat, but bruh, come on. Like, we'll be fine. Brian Anderson, thank you. What the Marlins? I should be thanking you guys, actually. Marlins, I appreciate it. Jesus. Like, why the heck did they do that? And you know what? I actually need a first baseman. And Keston, he's doing all right. But I kind of want somebody who can't play first base, who's new to the league, and is a 250-pound tank over there at first base. I'm getting the Yerminator, baby. For Luke, Payton, and Raymond, I got to do it. The guy can play first base. Granted, he's a 36 for fielding. We'll definitely fix that. But we got the Yerminator coming over to the Brew Crew, and he's going to be playing first base. Let's go, baby. I think with that, we're good for this year. Let's go ahead and put Yerman over at first base, and let's go ahead and get this thing started. I'll see you guys towards the end of the year. Again, I'm not expecting too much out of this team. I would love to win the division. Don't 
don't get me wrong. I feel like they should, but it's just in the NL Central. You have absolutely no clue what the heck's gonna happen. So let's see what's going on here. Let's see if we won with a losing record and we did not. Okay, 81 and 82. We actually lost it to Cincy. I can already tell. We ended up playing game 163 and we lost it by one to Cincinnati. And they won the division at 82 and 81. <laughs> They finished one game above 500 and won the NL Central. Again, I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. This whole thing's ridiculous. By the way, we did better than them, but whatever, it's fine. I guess that's baseball for you. Either way, Colton Wong did pretty good as a leadoff guy. Lorenzo Cain for 34 years old did great. Hitting third, we got Yelly. He actually did not do as good as before, but again, still did great, come on. But the second half, he definitely slowed down. Minus seven to power versus left. Oh my goodness. We also got Brian Anderson, did fantastic. We got the Yerminator. Again, he's gonna be great. We got Omar bringing it back a little bit of his CL Garcia, did pretty solid and then Tyrone Taylor. For a guy off the bench, I will easily take that. Also, Willie Adams is down with a torn finger ligament, so that's not great, but he's gonna be back for next year. He'll be fine. I will say he didn't finish off great, but it'll be all right for later. We still got a boatload of time to win this team World Series. I'm not exactly worried about it right now. So with that said, let's go and make this team better. Also, Brett Anderson, I gotta say, post up a 2.21. Out of 110 innings, the dude killed it this year. I love that. The guys we're gonna sign back is Manny. We're also gonna sign back a VCL Garcia and of course, Brett Anderson. But besides that, everybody else can go. Let's go and get to the actual free agents real quick. This is gonna be great. All right, let's see what we got in frame. See, we got Freddie Freeman. Oh my God, imagine. Could you guys imagine? I know we just got the Yerminator for first base. We also got Kesson down there, Daniel Vogelbach. But bruh, if we can get one of the best, if not the best first baseman right now in the league, and he'd be willing to go away from the Braves, like we gotta do it. 100% we gotta do it. Let's do it. Seven years, 203 back loaded. Let's see if we can actually get him. That'd be ridiculous though. I gotta be 100% real. That'd be freaking ridiculous. And then next up in center field, we're gonna go ahead and go for Stolen Marte for three years. He's gonna be great, especially in the postseason. I cannot wait for this. And like I said earlier in the video, we're going to go ahead and trade Lorenzo Cain because that contract is not looking great. The guy produced like crazy last year. I get that, but he's not worth that $17 million. That's a lot of money, especially for the Brewers. So if I can get a cheaper option, that's going to do pretty much just as well. I'm going to do it. And that's Stalin Marte right there. So there we go. Perfect. So right now the guys we're going to be going for is Freddie Freeman, Stalin Marte, Kendall Graveman, and Manny. If we can get all these guys, 2022 is going to look great. Real quick though, let's see what happens. Come on, Freddie. That's all I want. I just want Freddie Freeman. And we got him. Let's go, baby. The guy actually looks great in the uniform. I gotta be real. Blue and yellow suits the man. I gotta be real. Let's go. And just like that, we get Solomar Marte, our second guy off our free agent target. This thing's going great so far. Let's see if we can actually hold it up and not choke. And knowing me for this game, it's gonna be kind of tough, but let's see what happens. Besides all that, as Javi goes to Detroit. Okay, but yeah, besides all that, we're gonna go ahead and get into 2022. So I'll see you guys there. And let's take this stupid division. Let's not lose to the Reds again by a game, please. All right, here we are in 2022. And adding all those guys that we just got in free agency, we are up to sixth overall in the entire. MLB. When I said I wanted to get a star studded lineup, I was not joking around. Now we got Freddie, we got Yelly, we got Woodruff, we got Josh Hader, Corbin Burns, Colton Wong. Again, now still Marte. We also got Brian Anderson, Kendall Graveman. It's going good so far. I will say though, before we go into anything, I do have one guy that we got to get rid of because our budget isn't looking the greatest. We got to go ahead and trade away Lorenzo Kane before all that value goes away. So let's see what type of value I can go ahead and get out of this man. Let's see. And I know this might look bad now, but believe me, this is going to be the right move for us. Lorenzo Kane, Patrick, and Aaron going over the pot. Padres actually for Emilio Pagan and Drew Pomerantz. Both these guys are amazing out of the pen and the reason why I'm going for relievers out of everybody is because really the only two relievers I have is Devin Williams and Eric. The rest are actually starting pitchers and closers and I really don't want that. I want to have at least two or three setup guys and this is going to be great for us so let's go ahead and do it real quick and there we go. That fills some good spots and we also still saved quite a bit of money. And then next up later this year if Willie Adamas is not doing great we're not going to trade him but we're going to go ahead and use people like Luis Urias and all those type of guys to get a better shortstop because we're definitely going to need that if we want to contend. So Let's see what happens in 2022. I'll see you guys at the trade line. Let's see how high we can run the winds up. I'll see you guys there. All right, coming up at the trade line right now in 2022, we're 49 and 49 again. We're having to run that same type of mark as we're third in the entire MLB. The Brewers are weird in this game. I gotta be real. They're very, very weird, but we're gonna do our best to make sure that we do good with this team. But if I'm fighting the algorithm of this entire game and what this game's built on, it might be a losing battle, but we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to do the best things for this team, but bruh, this thing right now, 49 and 49 with this team right here, I'm not exactly sure about that one, Chief, but we'll see how this goes. We go and check everybody real quick. We got Sol Marte doing very, very good. We got Colton Wong, not so great. Okay. I really don't want Colton to be the next guy to fall, but bro, you can't be doing this right now. I get that he's only played 40 games and it might be a little cutthroat, but bro, we're legit going all in right here. We signed like at least what, 60, 65 million dollars worth of new players last year. If we're doing that, we got to go all in and we cannot have people like Colton Wong doing this. So Colton, I'm so sorry, bro, but you kind of brought it on yourself. Let's get this thing done. Let's go ahead and get a new second baseman in here real quick. Let's see what I can find. 500 
169 seconds later. And there we go. I know it might not be popular right now to get rid of Colton Wong. I completely understand that. But I will say, I do have a right to be a little bit concerned when he's doing this after coming back from injury, especially. Earlier in the season, he hurt his ankle, and it just really has not been the exact same since. And for Colton Wong and two other guys, we could get Luis over here. He bats left, plays second base, third base, shortstop, and left field. Not to mention, as a career 320 average, I think if there's anybody that I got to replace Colton Wong with, I think Luis is probably going to be the best guy. He's definitely the guy right here. So I think we got to do this. Let's go ahead and do it real quick. And there we go. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely going to suck without Colton, especially if he does come back. But Luis is definitely the more gifted hitter. And I definitely want to bet on that a little bit more than Colton Wong. So that's my thinking about that. Next up, Willie Adamas. Not the greatest average. We are going to keep him off the bench, but I just need that better starter. And ironically, the guy we're going to go for is Gio Urshela. I personally have not gotten Gio during the new game. He was a staple though last year. So I'm hoping that me and him can just pick up where we left off and do great together. Let's go, baby. Gio's going to be our new shortstop and this team just got a whole lot better. All right, now that we got Gio, let's go ahead and move him over to shortstop. And after that, we're ready to go. I'd say the pitching right now is sadly as good as it's going to get for at least this season. I'd say if Woodruff was doing a lot better, this team would look a whole lot different. But right now, Woodruff is letting me down. The guy's posting up a 4.6 so far. We still got a lot of baseball left, but right now that's not great. Again, the bullpen, I got to say, is holding it down. But besides that, Woodruff, you just got to come back just a little bit, my dude. Come on. After that, we're looking good. We got an amped up team. Let's go ahead real quick and see how these guys can do. Also, I'm thinking real quick before I do that, I'll bring up Tristan. I think that would be a little bit better instead of Walter. Super, super quick. Let's go and bring up Tristan. And then after that, we're ready to go. So there we go. Tristan is up here now. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. I'll see you guys at the end of the year. And let's chase this stupid division. Come on. All right, September, here we are. It all comes down to this. Come on, boys. Let's not screw up with this team. We got this. Come on, baby. 85 and 77. And we still didn't make it in. How do we keep losing with this team that we got right here? We even lost by six games. Okay. Again, our hitting was better, but our pitching just kind of let us down a little bit. Let me go ahead and check everything. Solid Marte was not bad. Luis, very, very solid from him. Freddie, amazing. is a 99 overall, by the way. Christian Yelich, I mean, come on. 42 home runs, 116 RBIs, and a 312. And this guy's not in the postseason. That's a crime. Hitting fifth, Brian Anderson, definitely had an off year. My God. Yeah, if we check him, he definitely had an off year. That is horrible. Okay. He'll come back a lot better next year. I can promise you guys that. Urshela had a horrible second half. Okay. Not great, boys. Come on. Do I got to get some better coaches in here? I might have to. Besides that, pretty much everybody else that I write, like Omar and Avisiel, but I actually might have to get some better coaches in here if these guys cannot perform. For the pitchers, Woodruff, that is definitely the highest ERA he's ever had, except for 2017. But out of a full season, that's the worst ERA he's ever had. Corbin Burns, still great. Freddie Peralta, he'll come back, I think, a lot better. Adrian Hauser, not horrible. I can't get mad at it. And then Framber, again, can't really get mad at it. He's going to be a lot better next year. And I got to be honest, the bullpen right here did fantastic. It just sucks that we're not in the postseason right now. That's really about it. I promise you guys, we're going to get there, but it's just taking a little bit of time. Let's go and get to the offseason real quick. The Yankees beat the Padres in 2022. Oh my God. And let's see what else we can do to try to fix this team a little bit. The first thing that I'm personally going to go for is getting some new coaches in here. The way that some guys been hitting and pitching, I'm not liking it. I'm going to get some goats over here for the coaches. Also, we got Gene Savage. When you got a last name of Savage and you're a hitting coach, I think it's an obligation that you have to get the job. So Felipe, you do look better, but I'm sorry, bro. Gene Savage is going to lead us to a World Series dynasty. Next up, we got the pitching coaches. Let's take a look at all this. We got Nicholas and we also got Lee. I'm thinking Lee actually right here. Lee's got all pluses and Nicholas has one minus that velocity. I can't be having that. So Lee, there we go. Let's hope that we sign him up. And also Joe Madden's right here. If there's one dude that I feel like can lead us to a postseason, it's going to be Joe Madden. I do like their current manager that they have, but I think Joe Madden will be better for the postseason. So we're just going to do that. And with that being done and out of the way, let's go ahead and get some new free agents and let's go ahead and beef up this team even more. Gene Savage, by the way, is now on the team. That's beautiful. We also got Madden. Come on, Lee. There we go. All right. Beautiful. That was a massive thing that I wanted to get done and I'm happy that we got it done. Literally one minute later. Oh my God. All right, we're here at the free agency right now. And Wilson Contreras is a dude on the open market. So far, I got to say, he hasn't been the greatest hitter, but I think he was injured last year. Based off the at-bats, yeah, only 98 games. Now, that's still a boatload of games for him only to hit 226. But I'm going to be betting on a comeback. And plus, if we can get him away from the Cubs, that's going to be beautiful. That's perfect for the rivalry. Let's go and do this real quick and let's hope that we can get him. Now, moving on, we have one goal and one goal only, at least moving forward. I want to get one more dude in this rotation that will shove absolutely everybody. That dude is Joe Musgrove for me. Get him on a five-year 86. $7 million deal that's back loaded. Beautiful. Let's do it. And legit, after that, we are all good. Let's go and get this thing started. And let's see if we get all the guys that we want. So far, we're two for two. Let's see if we can continue that. Already, first day out here, we got Joe Musgrove signing his deal. Perfect. And we lose that on Wilson. Now we're three for four, bro. Come on. Wilson goes to the Astros. You kidding me? For less money, too. That's stupid. Boss is over here. We got Gary Sanchez. I mean, the guy could be good, but I really kind of like what we got here. Honestly, if it's not Contreras, I'm probably not going to go for it. So I'm not even worried about that. That sucks, though. I was really hoping for it. Either way, the only two guys that we got left in the market is going to be Avisiel Garcia and Chase Anderson. Both those guys should be signing up pretty soon. Let's see if we get that. Okay, the Rays spending some cash, baby. The only time in my entire life I'll see that number associated with the Rays, but let's go. But yeah, besides that, Avisiel Garcia just has to sign his contract and then we're all good. Did we check real quick? He did. All right, perfect.
perfect. Let's go ahead and get into 2023 and let's get to the stupid postseason, please. All right, coming into our third season, 2023, we're ranked second overall in the entire MLB. So we've at least beat out either the Yankees or the Dodgers for one of those two spots. Let's take a look real quick if I can. The Dodgers are actually first place, so we beat out the Yankees. Let's go, baby. But can we please get in the postseason this year? It's actually getting insane at this point. For the second best team in the entire MLB, to not be in at least one of these postseasons is getting ridiculous. Let's do it this year. If we check the lineup from top to bottom, it's looking better and better. Marte, Luis, Freeman, Christian Yelich, Gio, you guys get it. We didn't change anything pretty much. Really, the only thing that we changed was the rotation. We got Joe Musgrove. We got better pretty much. Everybody else still looking amazing. I will see you guys at the trade deadline. Let's hope for a good season. My God. Coach. Give me some good luck, please. I'm gonna need it. Holy crap. All right, here we are. Let's run it back again. And finally, some good things are happening for the Brewers. We're 58 and 43. We should be at the top. Never mind. We're not. The Cardinals are 60 and 40. How are we still chasing them? I really don't know. Let's check the lineups. Marte doing all right. Luis still doing fantastic. Freddie, amazing. Christian, amazing. GL, fantastic. Brian, again, a lot better than last year. So I'll definitely take it. Omar being a good hitting catcher. Corbin Burns, again, who cares? He's a pitcher. And then Avisio Garcia. Okay, Avisio Garcia is definitely having a bad year. We could definitely have that fixed, but still, I don't think that is the only reason why we are behind the Cardinals. Let's check the rotation. Woodruff is back. Let's go. Burns, though, is going back to his old ways of almost having four ERAs. I was really hoping if he could have that 2022 season. Holy crap. He still could, but we'll see what happens. Next up, Freddy Peralta, 4.01. Again, those strikeouts go crazy, but actually, I was going to say I'm hoping that he can actually do a little bit better, but he's making good progress. Let's see how that goes. Joe Musgrove doing all right, and then Adrian Hauser still doing very, very solid. Also, Framber's doing very, very good out of the bullpen, too. I might have to make a spot for him, and that might have to come with us getting rid of Freddy Peralta. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It might have to come with us getting rid of Freddy Peralta because I need a lefty and I could also use Freddy for a fantastic right fielder. I'm gonna try it. Screw it. Let's see what happens. Trade talks, Freddy Peralta. Look at all that trade value. Oh my God. Okay. This might be a little bit easier than I thought. And this is the first time I've had this type of power in a long, long time. Let's not mess up. Let's actually make a smart deal real quick. If I'm thinking of some fire right fielders, of course, Aaron Judge, we could possibly get Aaron Judge. Oh my God. I'm also thinking of people like Conforto. We could get Conforto. I'm also thinking of people like Bryce Harper. We can almost get Bryce Harper. Honestly, if I'm being 100% realistic, I'd say Harper. We got him in the Phillies rebuild a couple days ago, and this dude was so incredible. He was getting like playoff MVPs, also actual just regular season MVPs as well. Hank Garen Awards, the guy was going crazy. So us getting Bryce Harper could be some insane as well. If we can get him for a VCL, there we go. Okay, yeah. Bryce Harper, get him over here. There we go. So now we got an outfield, a Christian Yelich, Starling Marte, and now Bryce Harper. This game's actually letting us create a dynasty out here in Milwaukee. And if we somehow don't get to the postseason, then I'm I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I really have no words for what that I'm gonna do. Just know I'll be pissed off, okay? Let's see what we do. That's the only guy I really have to change out. And let's see what can happen here in the second half. We just added an absolute stud. I'm talking a stud above almost all studs. Let's see if we can get some massive production out of the lineups. Oh, and after that Harper edition, we're looking great. Let's go, 102 and 60. Finally, thank you, coach. I asked coach earlier in the season for a blessing and the man gave it to me is Spades, by the way. 102 and 60, we take the division. Let's get it, dude. Let's take a look at these awards real quick. Who's got it? Yelich with the Hank Aaron Award, and we also got Yelich with a Silver Slugger, too. And Christian Yelich and Freddie Freeman came in second and third place for the MVP. Dominic Smith, though, went disgustingly crazy. Out of 155 games, had 53 home runs and a 328. I'd say, though, Yelich did a little bit better, though. I know the home runs are good, but come on. 352, 44 bombs, and 127 RBIs. Like, dude, 350? Are you kidding me? Let's check the rest of the boys. Saul Marte, not the greatest average-wise. Luis, again, fantastic. Freddie, fantastic. Bryce Harper matched it. We are already know about Yelich. Gio Urshela with the 30 bombs. We got Brian Anderson again back. And we also got Omar hitting pretty solid for a catcher. Now what about this rotation? Woodruff, fantastic. Corbin Burns, that's pretty solid. I'll take it. Joe Musgrove in the second half did better. Okay, I'll take that. Adrian Hauser, oh my god. A 2.9. Besides Woodruff, actually the best in this entire rotation. And then Framber, again that good lefty. The entire bullpen, by the way, besides Devin actually. But yeah, pretty much the entire bullpen did fantastic. Let's go and get into this. Who are we facing? Oh my god. This is the time for revenge. St. Louis our division matchup right here. Brandon Woodruff, I need some great games out of you. Beat John Gant and the rest of these boys to the ground. And we did 8-2. to two. Corbin Burns is next up against Miles. One that one, two to one. And then Joe Musgrove versus Dakota Hudson. One that one, and we sweep them onto the next. San Diego now. Oh, baby. They got Blake Snell going up game one. This is going to be difficult. But we also got Joe Musgrove, Emilio Pagan, Andrew Pomeranz on this team. Three incredibly good Padres pitchers. So I feel like we took a little bit of power away from them. Let's see what happens, though. Brandon Woodruff, Blake Snell. Lost that one by three. Okay. At least we lost the first game to their best pitcher. Next up, Corbin Burns versus Mackenzie Gore. One down, five nothing. Perfect. Joe Musgrove versus Chris Paddock. Come on. Lost that one by one. Are you kidding me? Adrian Hauser versus Lamette. Lost that one as well. Brandon Woodruff, bring it back, please. 
and lost that one as well. Okay. Again, super close games, but the Padres are probably going to win it, right? No, the Blue Jays beat them. Okay. That would actually be a fantastic World Series. I got to be honest. A Blue Jays Padres? Holy crap. Either way, sadly, we lose it in the NLCS, but the future's still bright and I'm not stopping yet. Let's keep trying to get these W's here and there. Let's go. We're still gunning for that World Series. Let's see if I can do it. And oh my God, we made it, baby. We made it. There's always that one year now with the show where everybody's a free agent and this is that year. We got Flaherty, Otani, Giolito, Urias, and Tyler Glasnow. Not to mention Lamette, Montgomery, Maeda, all these guys as free agents. For the position players, we got Grandal, we got Reese Hoskins, we got Jonathan Scope. Okay. Second base kind of let me down, but we also got Matt Chapman, Devers, we got Jesse Winker, Cody Bellinger. So many great guys. Also, we got to get our shallow back. I'm hoping that we can get him. If we can't, I guess we'll be all right because we still got a lot of amazing options down here, but I want GL. Either way, let's go ahead and go over the two guys that I want. I want Julio Arias because this dude is going to be fantastic. Not to mention that good lefty. He's definitely going to be replacing Framber in this rotation. Legit, no lie whatsoever. This guy would actually make us a World Series champion. Let's see if we can make it happen as the Diamondbacks get Matt Chapman. Shohei Otani goes to the Mets and we get Julio. Let's go, baby. Okay, we're good. Let's go and get a 2024 as Cody Bellinger goes to the Indians. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. 2024, here we come. Let's get it. And here we are. April 4th, 2024. Did we make it to that first overall? Are we the best team in this entire MLB? Let's take a look. And we are, baby. First in rank, first in contact, second in power, and first in pitching. My God. What a rebuild, baby. I promised all you Brewers fans in the beginning of this video, I promised you guys that I would get absolute studs from top to bottom, and I did it. Rotation as well, by the way. We still kept most of the Brewers rotation, but we got Urias now, and of course, we also got Joe Musgrove, as well as Brad Hand for the bullpen. We're also going to go ahead and bring up one guy for 2024, and that's going to be Odell Blackburn, dude. Our first overall draft pick in 2021, and let's see how he can do as well. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get this year started, baby. Let's do it coach i'm gonna need all the good vibes i can get out of you okay i'm gonna need this guy's world series magic i'm gonna bring him down for the world series or at least the postseason let me slow my roll a little bit but i'm gonna need his world series magic so let's hope that we can get there 569 seconds later and here we go again i've said it every single time but here we go again 63 and 40 right now we got that healthy lead above everybody we worked so hard for it and it's finally here 17 games above everybody, but that doesn't mean we're just going to lay back and not get better. I'm going to check the bullpen real quick, and Devin Williams, again, not doing great. I think he'll be fine, but my God, bro. Like, he weirdly does bad in this game. It's kind of insane. But yeah, legit, after checking pretty much everybody here, the only guy I guess I could go for as an upgrade would be Brian Anderson. This dude normally for me is amazing. Like, I'm talking 30-plus home runs. I'm talking a 300-plus average, but today that's just not happening, so I think we might go for a better third baseman. 569 seconds later. And I actually had a change of heart. We're going to go ahead and let Brian Anderson keep going for the rest of the season. We are going to get somebody else, though, for at least the bench. And sadly, to do that, we're going to have to send over Willie Adamas, who, by the way, is hitting a 195. Again, the king of vibes, but we're actually sending him back to a good home. We're going to send him back to the Rays for Mike Brasso. Brasso's hitting a 320 with 16 bombs, not to mention kills lefties. I need this guy on the team. So there we go. We got Michael. That is beautiful. He's got 95 pop and 74 contact against lefties. Not to mention, could fit in pretty much everywhere. He's going to be a fantastic tool in that postseason. Let's see how this goes, though. I'll see you guys there. And from the looks of it, I'm going to have to get coached down from his little perch. And to finish off this year, we finish off 108. 54. We keep getting better, baby. And it's time to go get coach. Literally one minute later. All right, coach. I'm gonna need you to be with me here. All right, let's do it real quick, though. I have to see who won the awards. Let's take a look. The MVP going to Gio Urshela. I'm glad we got him back. Oh, my God. Coach, you see that? Oh, my God. What type of broken game am I playing? I'll take it. And then the Luis getting the silver slugger. Bro, Urshela killed it. Oh, my God. Yeah, we'll take that every day of the week. Let's go. Again, I really don't even have to go into it, but everybody killed it. Look at this entire thing. I'm happy with absolutely everybody. The rotation as well. Oh, my God. Let's go and get the postseason going. And here we go. Who are we facing? San Diego, bro. Coach, you were with me last time. You were up there. I need you to be with me here in San Diego. Let's do it. Urias versus Mackenzie Gore for game one. Come on, coach. Coach, give the boys on the team and all the viewers at home a little speech. Like a speech about winning or some sort of motivational speech. Or not. Okay, well, he's a little bit more silent than I remember last time. But let's see what happens. Julio versus Mackenzie Gore. Come on. There we go. 3 1. Brennan Woodruff versus Chris Paddock. God dang it. Okay, come on, coach. Corbin Burns going up against Lamette for game three. Won that one. Perfect. Then Joe Musgrove, Blake Snell. Come on, coach. Do it right here. Give him the good juju. And there we go, baby. Let's go, coach. Facing now the Braves or the Dodgers. I'm going to need you even more here. Who are we facing? LA. Oh, God. Urias going up against his old team. Trevor Bauer versus Urias for game one. Who's taking it? And they do. God dang it. All right. Brendan Woodruff versus Dustin May for game two. Lost that one as well. The exact same score. Corbin Burns versus Tony. Won that one. Perfect. Joe. 
Want that one as well. Odell Blackburn versus Clayton Kershaw. Do we pitch Odell here? The game wants me to, and every single time I've tried to be smarter than the game, I've gotten unequivocally screwed over every time. That's a big word, but my God, it's happened every time. But I'm gonna let the game rock. If Odell gets absolutely smacked, I should have put him for Amber, but again, the game screws me every single time I try to do something, so let's see what happens. Odell versus Clayton. And we won that one. Again, does it make sense? No, not one bit, but let's go Odell. My dude posts up a 2.4 against the Dodgers, by the way. All right, we're up three to two. Trevor Bauer going in, trying to fight him off. Arias, put these guys in the ground. Come on, here's the World Series for the first time since like what, 1982 or something? Let's do it, Julio. And there we go, baby. Let's go, coach. We're doing it. All right, versus the Angels now. Let's get these boys their first ever World Series championship. Coach, give the speech. Thank you. Let's go. Woodruff versus Griffin Canning for game one. Lost that one. My God, Woodruff. Are you 0-3? He's 0-3. Julio, bring it back versus Jamie. Lost that one as well. Oh my God. Corbin Burns versus Dylan Bundy. Won that one. Coach, come on. I need the good luck, bro. Joe Musgrove versus Nick Pavetta in the World Series. We won that one one nothing. Oh my God. Odell Blackburn going up now versus Jose Escobar. And this dude's apparently a God. Coach, I need you to give Odell some good vibes. Come on. Do what you gotta do. Odell, absolutely smack him. And we don't. God dang it. Okay, we're going to the elimination type games over here. Julio versus Griffin. Coach, I need all the good luck I can get. Everybody at home, I need all the good luck I can get. Come on, Julio. I can't watch. Coach, tell me what happens. I'm looking straight down. Just don't give me bad news. Come on. Game six, please. And we want it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Woodruff right here needs to have a great freaking game. And I really don't want to quick manage this because I'm afraid that we might get that stupid bug that I've gotten the past, what, two times. Every single time I go to the World Series and game seven, I go into quick manage and I go in for the final out every single time the game freezes. Coach, that won't be the show. Fix it. Okay, please. But I don't feel comfortable just yet until I know that they fixed it going in. Versus LA, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, I think. No, Shohei Otani went to a different team. He's on the Mets now. Either way, Mike Trout's still there. And and I'd hate to not give Mike Trout a ring, but bro, the Brewers deserve it a little bit more. Those fans have been waiting for almost 50 years at this point. So Woodruff, no pressure, but millions of fans that have waited 40 plus years, their happiness rides on your shoulders. Let's go, baby, versus Jamie. Game seven, World Series, and we won it by one. Oh my God. Coach, thank you. My goodness, what a beast. He's going back on the perch, but give a like to coach. My God, won it by one. That could not have been closer. Oh my God. Dude, I'm sweating. I don't really sweat that much for these, but oh my God. Dude, that was so insane, but we finally did it for the Brewers. Let's go, baby. Let's go ahead real quick and take a look at the awards. Trout, I'm so sorry, but it had to be done. Let's check the awards real quick. Bryce Harper, World Series MVP. That is exactly why I got him. And then also Luis for the playoff MVP. That is also why I got Luis. There we go, dude. Everything worked out perfectly, pretty much. Everything that I put into the universe ended up happening. That's what I'm talking about. And also, real quick, I do want to check one thing. How did Brasso do? And he posts up a 190. Okay, not great. I was really hoping for this dude to have like a 400 average, but that's just not the case. Everybody else did amazing. Julio, fantastic. Woodruff, thank you for coming in clutch. And also, Odell Blackburn. Let's give it up to the dude. For real. Let's give it up to him. The dude came in in one of the most intense situations ever as a pretty inexperienced MLB player and smacked up the Dodgers. But with all that said, I hope all you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, leave a like on it. It seriously helps me out. Again, we're going for a thousand. If you guys want to see that Pirates rebuild, we're getting closer and closer to 50,000 subscribers. If you guys want to hit that subscribe button, I'd seriously appreciate that too. And Besides that, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. All those links are down below. And if you guys want to, go ahead and keep watching right over here. Both these videos right here are bangers. Just go ahead and click on one of them. And I appreciate all you guys. Coach, I appreciate you too.